Thank you. Well, I like the shake it all about, but we've had a fantastic speakers today. So um, I'm afraid mine is a little political, but it was really, um, I've recently been a member of parliament and I stood down at the last election and thought I could put politics behind me. Well, a great election, the election turns up and now we have for what my belief is, is one of the most important decisions that this country is going to make in the last 40 years and possibly in the next 40 years. And that is about sort of who we are. Are we part of Europe? Are we out of Europe? Or should we look to shake it all about? So my issue is I'm pro-Europe. I'm pro our relationship with Europe. But interestingly, Every time you say that in the pub, they look at you and think, oh my God. Number one, you're a bureaucrat. You're defending Euro European bureaucrats. Number two, you don't believe in this country, do you? Because it's all those outers that say how fantastic Britain is. We need to get out of Europe and we need to be and trade on our own. But I see it differently. I see those people who want to come out. They're the ones heading for the door. They're the ones that haven't got the confidence about this country and where its future lies. They're the ones that don't feel we have a voice. Well, all I can say is being pro-Europe, I feel I'm pretty robust. I'm pretty ambitious. I believe in this country. I believe in this country's future in the world, in Europe, with every international organization. Because it sort of matters. And to be frank, it's sort of our history. But. Let's look at really what Europe needs, because every institution, whether it be Whitehall, Westminster, those dastardly politicians, uh, Brussels, the UN, every organization needs a bit of reform, to say the least. It needs to be shaken up. And I think we need to ensure that our voice is strong in Europe, because they are our neighbors. We are in Europe, geographically that we need to shake it all up and ensure that we have a revived, renewed role in Europe with Britain setting the agenda as we have so many times before. So when we're told that we don't know how to get our way in Europe, I think we've got to see that we actually develop the single market that probably many people in this room, even without knowing it, actually benefiting from. We also were involved in expanding Europe to make it a more vibrant, prosperous, secure, and dynamic place. But what the Prime Minister and any leader of, of this country, of any political party, needs to understand, or we need to appreciate, is he's dealing with 27 relationships. Now, guys and girls, you know, we all have relationships. We have relationships with one maybe two, maybe three people, 27, that's really pushing it, you know, however excited, however e many evenings out you have. We are having to negotiate it with 27 people to shape a Europe that is dynamic, that serves the British people, and that has got future right at the heart of it. But this country is pretty good at relationships. I mean, you know, the UN, NATO, even FIFA, which needs a lot of shaking up. Uh, we are there actually making the weather and shaping these organizations. So when people say that we don't have a voice in Europe, where we don't, can't get our way, this is not the case and we can do it, but it is difficult and it will always be tough. But I have never been somebody who ran away just because life was tough. But Europe also is opaque. I don't know how many people in, in this auditorium know or feel that something that's going on in Europe is actually impacting our lives. And Europe has been rubbish at telling us. So let me say, fishermen in Ramsgate, they sell 90% of their fish in the Boulogne market. Well, all I can say, the French fishermen won't be totally happy if we come out of Europe. We've got the Dover, the steward on the Dover ferries. His whole life is about the movement between France and the UK, the whole continent in the UK. And you've got the nice um, sort of young apprentice who works at Airbus, who's doing work in Toulouse as well as in Bristol. We are interrelated. We always have been with Europe. We're always been part of our neighbors. And what is absolutely crucial is that we 
people like myself, made the case that personalizes this, that gives you the sense that you have some ownership over Europe itself. But then we have the opposition, the people who are looking to say that we have a future outside Europe. Well, I've sort of identified three different options. What does exit look like? How, how does the world look like if we came out of Europe? Well, we have one view, which is let's go back to the 1950s. Fabulous, the outside lose, the discrimination, the lack of equality laws. Do you know, I mean, Europe has really framed a lot of the laws that actually are very much at the heart of particularly gender equality issues. Um, we also have from Europe, uh, they set the regulations that gave us paid holidays. I don't think a lot of people would want to give that up. So we've got the 1950s model, very nostalgic, very quaint. I'm not sure that's the place for us, for a modern Britain. You've then got the other option, which is about having um, absolute zero regulation. Let's get rid of that equality law. Let's look at health and safety. I mean, who needs health and safety? This is not, not important. Let's be this totally libertarian, free trade, deregulated country. That's not where we want to be. Then there's the third option, which is, of course, the best of everything, where we can have the single market on one hand, we can trade with Europe, but we don't have to comply and we don't have to be part of the EU. Well, as somebody said to me, it's a little bit like either wanting to be sitting around the table or to be put on the menu. Because all I can say is that there will be 20, 27 countries sitting around there thinking, how can we do better? We haven't got Britain setting a different agenda. We haven't got Britain shaping a new ambition for Europe. What we'll do is go down our own way. And we, the United Kingdom, will just receive the regulations with no say. I don't see that that's an option for this country. I believe in this country being greedy, much greedier than those people who want to come out of Europe. They want to lose 500 million customers in the EU to gain all these fantastic new customers in the Commonwealth, in America, in the, the new BRIC, the emerging economies. I say we can have both. Why don't we have Europe and the rest of, of the world? Germany trades with the rest of the world as much as they do uh, it, it, within Europe, we can do the same. It is our ambition that needs to be accentuated. It's our ambition that needs to be highlighted and highly tuned. We have got a great, great country. We know how to do international relations. We know how to get our way in international bodies. We're an exciting future-looking country with an ambition and an absolute determination to succeed. We can do that as well in Europe as we can outside Europe, but how much stronger we are and how much more prosperous we will be and how much more dynamic we will be working with our partners rather than against our partners. We will have a referendum in the next two years. I hope very much that you will think about what the future of this country is, where it will be strongest, how we can do better, and where we can ensure that we shape a, a dynamic Europe that serves Britain and the British people much better than it has in the past.